and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and today we have this, the new Bold and Pure Opel Grandland. Bold and Pure, you gotta love that. Anyway, he's right, it's the SUV for those who just want everything. Come, let's take a look at this. So the Grandland itself was actually first launched in 2017 and then it was actually called the Grandland X. Then when it became or changed ownership, it became the Opel Grandland and actually that was 2021 and that came with a whole new design language and like I said, whole new ownership. So now it comes under the Stellantis brand and um, with that, as Matthew said, very much a bold and pure design language. What I really like about it, particularly with this car, is the fact that it matches my jacket. So I think that's probably one of the most important reasons to buy this vehicle straight there and then. But anyway, probably not the orange side of it. Anyway, looking around the front here, the design language itself, what they're calling this is the visor. And that's very much based around a sort of motorbike helmet visor that comes down. So very protective, but also gives you the vision to see through it and uh, actually what's going on out front. And actually most of the uh, technological gubbings are behind here and also up the top there as per normal. The actual front itself here is very much based around the Opal compass viewpoint, which is a north, south, east, west sort of compass style. And that cuts through this Blitz logo, which in our, our actual position here is all dressed in black. So very much a sharp look here. And speaking of sharp looks, the lights here, they're calling them Intellilux. So they're matrix headlights. And so they sort of cut out different pixels and make sure that you don't dazzle everything in front. The rest of it, there's some, actually this is blocked off, but sort of some vent, fake vents and airflow that gets through to the small engine underneath or underneath his bonnet, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, in terms of dimensions, what we've got is around about 4.47 meters in length and around about 1.6 meters in height. And it does have a roughly a, well, about a foot of ground clearance. So what you are in the area of is an SUV or a small or a small compact SUV or a sort of crossover size. But very much, uh, I think Opel are calling this an SUV and quite rightly because of its grand land name. The contrasting roof is what they're calling diamond black and also you can see the mirror caps and also the sills and the feet themselves are round about 90, well they are actually 19 inches and diamond cut so they're actually quite light as well with, yep, discs up the front and actually discs at the rear so discs all around discs for everybody lovely actually let's oh the other thing is look at this some privacy glass here to make sure that whatever you're doing in your grand land nobody needs to know about at the back here we've got a roofline spoiler the black glass back here I, I really like doesn't actually have any rim around it so or no edging so very much a kind of funky looking glass well privacy glass anyway black badge as per actually Matthew says Rolls Royce and also Grandland spout, spout out in Grandlandy speak uh, LED tail lights you've got uh, black surround here which is again diamond black and also a kicker tailgate which opens up to 514 litres of trunk space and actually under here you can actually get a uh, spare tyre under here but ours seem to have gone missing and also so does our sort of hazard light so it's probably never going to break down which is obviously a good thing let's look under the bonnet only looking down because it's quite a tiny engine. So what we have is a 1.2 litre three cylinder engine. And what gives you is 96 kilowatts of power and 230 is my dentist joke. Uh, uh, Newton meters of torque, which I still find funny anyway. It's married to an eight speed uh, AT box, which uh, what that means is it's very frugal on fuel actually because of its, uh, its size as well. So what it gives you is 5.4 litres per 100 kilometres and roughly in emissions, should you find the exhaust, about 125 grams per kilometre. But the downside, although it will, they're calling autobahn proof, so it will get up to a 100 k's sort of eventually, I think it's about 10 seconds, but it does stay there. And what we've got is we've tested it and it stays around about 100 k's, around about the sort of 15, 1700 RPM. So pretty good. 
There's also uh, another option coming out, which is a plug-in hybrid, which we will get our hands on, uh, which offers a whole different sort of set of rules to it. But anyway, speaking of things that should be plugged in, Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on with that. Speaking of being plugged in, well, this interior of the Grand Land makes you feel quite connected to the car in a way, and that's thanks in part to the seats. The seats, of course, which as per Opel's list of party tricks is AGR approved. They are ergonomic front seats. Both the passenger and driver are heated as well. And you do get some suede going on there too in the form of actually Alcantara. So there is a, a sporty factor to that too. As is with the steering wheel, which is also heated and flat bottomed. So really Opel have thought of all the touch points that someone in the front might have with the car, especially in the colder countries and made sure those are, are nice and warm and toasty to make this grand land an extra comfortable place to be. Now, what goes with the comfort, of course, is the practicality aspect in an SUV like we have here. So the door bins are, are quite generous in terms of size, although their sort of layout makes it quite awkward to put things into, but there must be something you could put in there uh, anyway. Down the middle here, well, you do have a compartment there which can be used to house the key or frankly anything. And there is actually a USB A charging port down there and your 12 volt socket hidden underneath too. The other thing is down the middle here, you've got your cup holders there, which this is removable. You've got a storage space behind there. And now you might be wondering where the phone goes because you haven't seen any sort of space yet. Well, that's where Opel's safety thinking comes into play because the phone storage is actually under the armrest over here, like so. And there is actually a wireless phone charger in there with a strap around it for you to tuck your phone away into and put it out of sight, out of mind. Because of course, why would you need your phone when everything you do need is on that infotainment screen there? Now, the infotainment screen and the cluster there are part of Opel's Pure panel, which, as you'll notice uh, on this particular Grand Line, is the older style with the sort of split screen approach. In the middle here, this infotainment screen is 10 inches and it's got your connectivity sorted via Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, or Android Auto, both wireless as well. And you can control several of the safety features through here as well as the air conditioning even though you do also have the option of air conditioning buttons down the bottom there. Shortcut buttons are all across here down the bottom too. And I've got a remark on the safety systems actually of this Grand Land because there are a plenty, including a highway integration assist, which in particular helps you with moving into traffic and sort of merging lanes and stuff like that. So it's quite intelligent from that sense as is the instrument cluster. So let's take a look over there. Now, in front of the driver, you have a 12 inch instrument cluster, as you can see there, and Opel have laid it out as simply as possible. So on the left side, you have your rev counter, and on the right side, you have your petrol gauge and your temperature for the engine. And then in the middle up the top, you have your speedometer there too. Notice also the large map across the middle there, which actually in the infotainment screen is in 3D too and as you can see there is some 3D aspects going on in the screen over here too. So there is plenty of information it will also recognize speed signs of course and you can see down the bottom there that's where it will show up. Now if you do want to change the layout of the screen in front of you all you have to do is resort to the stalk on the left and you can twist like so and change to like dials for example a more traditional style layout if you like and then there's the minimum which is sort of stress-free driving darkens out everything and just shows you your vital statistics there in the middle and if you take a step back to the steering wheel as i mentioned earlier it is uh, heated as well as flat bottom for that sporty outlook and in terms of the buttons there you do get your adaptive cruise control on the left along with the steering wheel heater button there in the middle and then on the right side, voice control as well as buttons to operate the infotainment screen. And there are two paddle shifts tucked in behind there to operate that 8-speed automatic gearbox. Now, in the back of the Grand Land, it is of course a family SUV. And that means it should be able to hold adults and children, of course, in the back here. 
and it does as you can see i'm leaning back quite comfortable i've set up the seat in front of me well for me and i still have a decent en enough of um knee room here plenty of foot room underneath and headroom is good too you can easily sit two adults here one child in the middle and there are of course isofix points on both sides too for your child seats as well as a central armrest like so with two cup holders and you do get air conditioning vents as well here in the back so Opel have really thought of all the sort of necessities that passengers in the back of the Grand Land might need but speaking of the two people at the front well they have given plenty of thought to that engine as well and the gearbox combination and that's certainly a highlight of this Grand Land SRI so let's go and take it for a drive all right so the Opel Grand Land um, I first drove this car SUV I guess you can call it because you can call it an SUV over in Rüsselheim because I love saying Rüsselheim uh, Germany and uh, nipped straight onto the uh, Autobahn with it and the first thing that I heard about was that it was a 1.2 litre engine and that obviously scared me to go a 1.2 litre engine on the on the notorious or infamous uh, Autobahn it's going to underperform and in all honesty it doesn't it gets up it's not fast off the off the line 10 seconds or so to get to 100 but it does get up there and just continues to stay there so they're calling it autobahn proof and it sort of is it will just continue to go that's correct and well to flex my german since dave has already done his i'm sitting in the agr or action gesunderuken seats um, <laughs> but speaking of autobahn yes we were driving along the motorway earlier not to say that we do have autobahns here in New Zealand, but doing the legal speed limit. And there was no sort of wind noise. You didn't feel like the car was uncomfortable sitting at motorway speeds. Uh, so it does well, you know, on, on the sort of um, open road, essentially. Suspension is quiet too. There was barely any road noise coming through. But at the same time, when you do want a bit of power for overtaking and you put your foot down, it does have to drop about four, four gears, gears. Uh, yeah, to give you any sort of power. Pretty funny, actually, uh, watching it drop so you have four gears down is actually... And it does take a, a nice beat to get there as well. But again, like I said, once you are there, it does continue to pull. And, you know, this is not a rocket ship by any stretch of the imagination, nor a performance vehicle, but it does perform pretty well. The other thing is the suspension is really firm, I have to say. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's child friendly by, well, it's not unchild friendly, but it's for those long runs, you're going to need these seats to make sure that you are staying comfortable. And, you know, have taken it on a fair amount of runs already, and it is like I said, a firm ride, which is great for the corners, but uh, yeah, thankfully my back isn't broken. Yeah, it's just as well that it does have these AGR seats because exactly that. We did some driving earlier in the week too in the other Grand Than, the PHEV model. And um, yes, it is a firm ride uh, on the potholes, bumps and speed humps and all of that. And the other thing is, I gave that away. Yes, there is also a PHEV model coming uh, to this range with a slightly different powertrain combination. Um, but essentially the same 8-speed automatic gearbox as well. Back to this one. When it comes to frugalness, I mean, five point something liters per hundred kilometers is great. So I, I think it's tremendous to, that you can actually just get so much fuel out of such a small or so much range out of such a small sort of petrol tank. And um, uh, the steering, the visibility all around, it does have a nice ride height. It's just a nice SUV from that point of view. It's a, it is, in a way, a very um, family-friendly, convenient SUV. And uh, PSA, uh, as they used to be called, Peugeot Citroën Group, including Opel, have really mastered that use of a small engine to, you know, squeeze out as much power as they can, but at the same time, not cost in terms of the efficiency. And 5.4 liters per 100 k, as Dave said, is extremely uh, wallet-friendly in terms of uh, the fuel efficiency rating. And it's certainly a an improvement on some other hybrids and things from different brands so it's quite impressive too 
Absolutely. I wonder about the longevity, giving t a turbo so much push. But, you know, they're tried and trusted engines, really, so you should be all right. The other thing, though, as Matthew touched on, the PSA, the GM as well, there are a fair amount of parts that if you start exploring, you can find, you know, that do cross the brand. So they do share the engine. This sort of gearbox configuration here or the, the gear selector configuration has been seen in the likes of Peugeot and things like that there's and if you do really start going with a, a sort of magnifying glass you can see GM you can see Peugeot you can see those sort of those sort of brands popping around but I don't know I, I kind of like the fact that these products are interactive so you'll probably be able to get a good deal should they break down but as we've discussed with no breakdown thing they're not going to break down that's true that is the benefit that you know in the future the parts and stuff like that for um sort of aftermarket availability is not going to be an issue with such sort of widespread use across different brands but at the same time there's enough here to make it specifically an opel you oh, know absolutely yeah. with the visor with the intellilux leds the the styling the agr seats all of those remember are unique to opel and you know it very much feels enough to justify you know brand differentiation if you like actually i think the agrs do cross over to peugeot as well so just so you know but on the whole it is you're right they are you, you feel like you're in a different car and also the i mean this standout color and also the the standout design does let you know you are in a a car that or a vehicle that not so it does a standout on the on the on your driveway absolutely and opel does do these these colors really well like this cobalt blue the matcha green of course on the mocha and while filming the outside of the car earlier we did actually have someone stop us and say you know well i really like the color and what's what's that brand so it does still inside a bit of curiosity and there's that little bit of mysteriousness as well about that blitz logo <laughs> blitz logo love it So there you have it, the new Opel Grandland. No, it's dropped the X, but now it has the X factor. So lovely blue color, particularly if you go for this, it is an option of 800 bucks, but I think it's worth it. Um, does stand out inside as well. So you've got everything. I mean, they say it's the SUV for everything that if you want everything i don't know there's something along those taglines but it does have everything there including plenty of safety plenty of i know cut ride comfort just an engine that is going to make you well it's going to get there but not if you're in a massive hurry but there you go but you can get there comfortably with heated seats heated steering wheel heated mirrors you know they have thought of everything especially for those colder mornings to take care of every comfort that you might want or need yeah and even the dash layout's good nice nice sort of finishing across the top and around the side is good and um just i want a pure panel that's just one panel but i'm so demanding say i want everything i should be just happy with a car that's the same color as my jacket anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one see you <laughs>